It has been a thoroughly heartwarming morning slash afternoon spent here with the Hole in the Wall Horse Project, assisting all animals in need. And it happens to be a Tuesday, the 12th of July. And uh, we've come to meet Marlene Else. Many people in horse racing will remember the era when Paul Lafferty had a lot of horses in his yard that were named after farmyard animals. Remember Goat Winner of the Oaks, also the first scurry she ever ran in over 800 meters and also ended up in the Vodacom Durban July, as it was known then. He also had a horse called Donkey, he also had Chicken, and he also had Mule. And this horse over here is actually not a horse, he's a mule. And he's currently been fitted with some new apparel because the original hardness that he had was uh, rather ill-fitting. Very uncomfortable, the bit was too big, and now he's got a nice happy mouth snaffle and cheek pieces that fit him, and he's even got a very bling kind of brow band so his owner will be delighted he has the most fantastic temperament for a mule but the most important thing is to find out from Marlene else exactly how she ended up at hole in the wall and what kind of support structure she has to help these animals that need every little bit of help they can get we actually moved here about 17 years ago I just uh, saw the need in all the animals around here I mean you see them walking past your fence every day. I just can't turn a blind eye. I have to do something about it. So I started off with a couple of horses and the word spread. And then everyone just started showing up with their, their horses and their dogs and their cows and all animals. And um, then I just had to buy supplies and treat more and more and more. And it, yeah, it got to all this. So it was never planned though. <laughs> I'm not a horsey person by nature, I don't even ride, but you have to. You can't see a suffering animal and not do anything about it. I've just got the heart for them and I love animals. We get all the time that the holiday goers come back and they say, wow, this area is really cleaned up regarding the dogs. They're all looking good. There's one or two usually that slips through the cracks, yeah. but we try to get to all of them in due time. But we've got so many sterilized over the last few years that we have less and less puppies and we're happy about that. Now, it must give you enormous gratification to see those young boys walking off into the distance with these horses with new bridles, saddle sores that have been fixed and some kind of notion how to look after these horses. Yeah, it's, it's a bit difficult with the kids, but they, you know, they've got that pride when they see their horses looking good and the gear and the tack is all proper. It's a nice feeling, definitely. From a point of view of interpreting, I mean, they don't always speak the same language as we do. Uh, this is their homeland. How do you get the message across to them? Very difficult. <laughs> um, yeah, with the kids, uh, I think now the case is with the school holidays, the kids come more than, usually it's the adults or the old modalas that come. Sometimes I have a translator around if, if needed, or I quickly have to find one because my worker doesn't speak a word English either. Or it's kind of like sign language in a way. Um, yeah. I've learned a few relevant words here and there. So, um, yeah, we're able to communicate. But old chief, the old Madala, he started volunteering about 12 years ago. He just came every Tuesday and just jumped in and did whatever he can and then went home. And so loyal. Every Tuesday he shows up. Every Tuesday. And now he's getting paid and he doesn't miss a day such a great guy. And looking in your office, which is very neat and tidy, I might add, you've got a cabinet that's got a lot of medication in and a lot of very expensive stuff that is absolutely fundamental to treating horses that have got infections or wounds. Who supports that? You would only want to see my knees. <laughs> they hardly have any skin because I'm always crawling, begging for stuff. We have got a Facebook group, Highland the World Horse Project, and that's why we take the photos and we post it so people can see. Yeah, and then they start donating and if they donate funds, we buy medicine from that. They donate tech and old saddles and stuff. But yeah, it's a lot of begging. Sometimes we have to go without stuff, but we make do with what we have and what we can every day. But it's so expensive, the medicine. Oh. Yeah. We just wanted to say um, that we're very grateful for the opportunity to come and share a morning with you. And thank you so much for your hard work and we will do whatever we can at Four Racing to make sure that you, you do continue to get funding for your very worthwhile and special project. Oh, thank you so much and thanks for you all joining me today and um, 
the amazing work you did today. I've I usually got my hands full of, of myself, and you were a huge help today, fitting bridles and helping with wind treatments. Amazing, thank you.